I say it all the time, you can't make great plays unless you play with great effort. The statement represents everything sophomore safety Kevin Byard is about. It's a trait head coach Rick Stock still noticed while first recruiting Byard. When you recruited Kevin Byard, just tell me what kind of player he was uh, in high school positions. Uh, what really stuck out to you? Kevin was an excellent high school football player. Uh, played wide receiver, played defensive back, was a kick returner, was a really good athlete. Uh, you could see his athleticism uh, by the different positions that he played. So we knew we were getting a good athlete. He's got good size. Uh, you know, coming out of high school, he wasn't a frail kid, you know, that you had to build up and bulk up. So we redshirted him that first year. And, and then during that year, the redshirt year, uh, you really thought uh, by what you saw on the practice field that he was going to be an outstanding player. Once Byard arrived on campus his freshman year, Stock still made a decision. It was to put a red shirt on Byard. It wasn't because Byard wasn't ready, because he was, but more so to maximize the number of snaps throughout his career as a Blue Raider. His freshman year when we red shirted him, he was probably good enough to play that he could have helped us, but uh, it wouldn't have been in the role that you know, that he's in now, uh, where he wasn't. And I didn't want to waste a year where he was playing, you know, just a limited amount of snaps, but he was good enough to help us his true freshman year. In his red shirt freshman year, Byers started all 12 games, made 74 tackles, intercepted four passes, and returned two for touchdowns. It was a mark he would replicate during his sophomore season. As he started playing last year, uh, then you saw the, his drive, his determination, uh, his work ethic, uh, you know, his study habits and, uh, for, for football. And then it's progressed and carried over to this year also. Plenty of players around the country have a similar skill set to that of Kevin Byard, but what separates Byard from the rest, it's his preparation during the week. It's watching film constantly to find the little details about every week's opponent. In high school, we never really watched film. It may be Sunday. He might bring the team up for a little bit to watch film, but you know, college, when I got here, I really became a student in the game. I, I spent at least a couple hours every week trying to watch film on the next opponent. Usually, you know, that Sunday we had practice, we'll watch film, but that Monday and Tuesday, I try to come up here on my own time, just sit in my coach's office, watch film, trying to get, you know, trying to get a head start on the opponent. I know a lot of guys who's great athletes, man. I, I mean, I feel like everybody who plays Division I football has the ability to be great. And it's all about the people who want to take that time just to study your opponent who is going to get that extra, you know what I'm saying, that put that extra work in, is going to get that advantage in the game. And I feel like, I mean, I want it all, man. I want to be the most successful player as I can be. So yeah, I'm going to watch film. I don't never want to go out on the field not knowing what I'm supposed to do. Back to throw. Raiders don't give him much pressure. Intercepted. Kevin Byard at the 50-yard line. Back to the 40, to the 30. Byard to the 20. Byard to the 10. That's going to be a touchdown. He has done it again, Kevin Byard, with wow. another pick six, his fourth of his career. This play right here, uh, we're in the coverage we like to call kick, whereas though we will roll the safeties or the coverage to the weak side of the field. So whereas though the deep corner, he would go deep third, I'm going middle third, and this safety right here, he's going to the, the thirds right here. And the corner is going to jam the receiver at the bottom of the screen. And basically, I'm just reading off a of three and two. The receiver's three and two to get my pass and run key. Once I got my pass and run key, I opened my hips up and just was, had my eyes on the quarterback. From the corner of my eye, I seen the receiver breaking in on the deer route. So I kind of trailed him a little bit, waiting, knowing that the quarterback was going to throw the ball. And once I seen the ball, I just knew it was going to be picked. I knew it. As soon as it came off his hand, I knew it was overthrown. So I kind of stopped and waited for the ball. And when I jumped, I seen number grass and just made it. Two people missing, just took it all to the house. On first down, they have a fullback in there, play action. E.J. Hilliard looks to throw. He's hit as he throws. Ball is going to be intercepted. Raiders have a convoy. It's fired to the 30, to the 20, to the 10. Fired, touchdown! His third pick six of his career. We're in, we're in Pascal, and um, Logan throws the ball a post, and he comes across from the, the right hash going towards the left hash and makes a one-handed catch. You know, it's not bobbled, it's not anything. He just reaches up and makes a one-handed interception and, you know, returns it there. And we're talking about it as coaches the next day. You know, 
offense back forth defense did you see that catch that KB made and uh, it's gotten to be where he does something just about every day that you look at and go wow did you see that If you had to pick one feature about Kevin, what would be the best thing that he brings to this team? One thing, that's a good question, Justin. Um, I would say just his dependability. Uh, the team respects him on how hard he works. He's a great leader for us. Our team looks and says, I know Kevin will make a play. You know, when the tight games get tight, when it's a tight game there in the fourth quarter, uh, we have tremendous amount of confidence that Kevin's, KB's going to come up with a play, whether it's the interception in overtime against FAU, whether it's a, an interception return against Southern Miss, whether it's an interception return against Memphis last year. Uh, he's just got a knack for making a big-time play in a critical situation. My favorite interception of all time was probably my freshman year when I took the interception back against Troy in the last couple seconds. Trojans lead 21-16. Swings it out. Ball is going to be intercepted. It's Kevin Byard. He gets by one man. Byard still on his feet. He may go. 30, 20. Byard to the 10. Byard touchdown. Middle Tennessee. You know, two, three plays later before that, our linebacker Craig Island, he got hurt. He basically ended his career. And, you know, everybody just during that timeout break, we all said, we got to make a play for Craig. We got to do something for Craig. And when I came down to intercept the ball, it was almost like a storybook ending to it. It was just crazy, man. I was just blessed. And that, I say that's probably like my favorite interception. From a work ethic standpoint, I've, I've compared uh, Kevin to Brian Dawkins an awful lot, who I recruited we had at Clemson. And when Brian got to Clemson, he was, uh, he had tunnel vision. <clears throat> and uh, he was only focused on school and ball. And uh, he worked out. You could go by the practice fields on the weekend, and he'd be out there working on his back pedal. He stayed after practice. He was always up in the coaches' offices watching film. And that's what KB does. You can go up there, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and he's up in one of our offices, you know, watching film on who, who we're getting ready to play. Uh, he stays after practice. He works hard during practice. He's a great leader. And plus, they play the same position. Brian was number 20. You know, Kevin's, you know, 20 here. So there's some similarities from that standpoint. I think about NFL sometimes, but at the same time, I feel like if I handle my business now and handle the things I need to be handled now as far as working hard and staying humble, I feel like NFL would take care of itself. You know, I talked to my family. I talked to a couple coaches, you know, stuff about, well, coaches back home about NFL dreams and stuff like that. It's all good, and I always want to make it the NFL when I first got here. But my main thing is coming here, get my education, and I want to be able to take care of my family in the long run. So, you know what I'm saying, football is not always there for me, but it's, it's a great feeling just to be even in a conversation of making the NFL. You know, you're growing up your whole life dreaming about making it to the NFL, and it's, it's just a great feeling, man. It's a blessing. It's a blessing.